And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Taiwan Formosa. Now, Taiwan Formosa is a game about rebuilding Taiwan. It's directly after the war, and I guess it takes place over years, and you're one of these contractors coming in, getting the resources you need to build it. This is a game that has a bunch of different cards. You pick them, you build them, you get the resources for them, and then they take some time to build. You get them, they give you special abilities. Really cool looking game, a lot of cool things. I was excited about the game. Let's see if it meets my expectations. At the beginning of the game, you're going to use these randomizer cards to get some buildings that are placed out here. There's four copies of each one. So, for example, I have four copies of the Tax Bureau. Each building has a certain number of resources it costs to build it. So this costs two bricks, a wood, and a stone. It starts at two time, and it's worth six victory points if you build it. It also gives you a special ability. In this case, when the income phase happens, everyone else will get three less coins. For each Tax Bureau you have, you can have multiple now, on a player's turn, the first thing that happens is they're going to get two dice. You can have more than two dice. You can have up to seven dice. Each extra die is going to cost you five coins, so you'll simply just pay. You start with 40 coins, and you get an income of 15 per turn, so you'll pay for as many extra dice as you want. Once you roll the dice, you basically get the resources that are shown on the dice. So you have merchants and workers. These are squares because you can use them on your turn, but you can't keep them from turn to turn. And then you have other resources which are round that you can basically keep from turn to turn, but you can keep five from round to round that you can spend. Players can also then buy cards. There are different places to buy cards. First of all, you can buy cards from the random ones that are placed down here. And like I said before, they're each going to cost a certain number of resources. When you buy them, you're going to place them on your board over here. So, for example, this one goes under two, and at the end of each turn, everything moves over one, so the building doesn't give you the points or the special ability until it moves off the board. So some buildings will start farther up on there. You can also build special unique structures. There's a whole pile of them up here that match different color provinces. These will cost more resources. They take longer to build, but when you get them, you're also going to get to put a disc in a certain province. As the game goes by, there are various provinces on the board, and you'll get to put discs in them. You can also just pay to put discs on these. As time goes by, you can pay two resources and five dollars to put a disc down in any spot. You can exchange workers and resources for a worker or merchant if you need it. You can always spend a merchant in two. That's basically the main use of merchants to uh, get the resources of your choice. You can also work overtime, spending a worker and two dollars to move a card that you're building farther along the track so it can get built faster. Once you're done with that, then all your cards slide. Income phase, you get fifteen dollars, keep only four resources, and we keep going. Now the game will end when a certain number of decks runs out, which is basically equal to the number of players. At that point, you will get points equal to your uncompleted buildings minus whatever number they're on. You will also score points for control of the different areas. Whoever has the most discs gets control of that area, and their points will be equal to the number of discs that are there. So here, purple is going to get six points. And that's it. That's how you play the game. Most points at the end is the winner. The art in the cards is fine. All the cards actually have uh, Chinese on one side and English on the other, so that's kind of nice. And they have these various different things. The resources are really easy to tell apart what colors. The card quality is not terrible. It's, it's fine. The dice are okay. They have the things printed on. I'm pretty sure it's going to rub off after a while. But again, it's pretty easy to tell them apart. I do find it weird that they have these tokens since you can't keep them from round to round. You're just using them now, so I don't see why these matter. But all the tokens are some, you know, they, they look good, they're easy to feel. And the whole thing just has a really cool look to it. When you look at the island, the map, the board here, everything looks really well done. 
I like that the board itself tells you exactly what you'll do from turn to turn. That's very convenient. So overall, I'll say pretty good uh, component quality. Okay, so there's a couple problems I have with Taiwan Formosa. As you can see, the component quality and the theme is not one of them. I think that stuff is great. But you can pick, <laughs> so it's a kind of a funny thing. You can pay money for extra dice. That's fine. It's kind of a weird economy. You don't really spend money on much else. So it's like, ah, oh, we'll buy as many dice as I can afford this turn and maybe get something that gives me more money. You can keep some money to switch uh, a die to something else, but whatever. The problem this game has, so for example, let me grab some of these cards here off the board. Let's say I roll three wood. So I look at the cards here. This one needs two brick and a wood. This one needs two iron and a stone. This one needs two brick and two iron. This one needs five iron and so on. If I roll a bunch of the wood, I'm going to look for the building that's wood. Ah, here it is right here. This one requires four wood. This is the building I'm going to build. That is by far the biggest problem with this game. You roll the resources and you're like, ooh, these are the resources I get. Which building may I build? You're not like, you can't save that many resources from turn to turn. So you just look at the cards and go, I have the resources to build the train station. I'm building a train station. That's extremely problematic for me. So let's compare this to deck builders like Dominion. Dominion gives you a certain amount of money each turn. You can use that money to buy cards. You pick the cards. There's a lot of choices. Some are more expensive than others. So you might have to save up and get more money or something. This has very different resource costs for everything. You can't really save. So you roll dice and you're like, that's what I have to get. I find that extremely problematic. Fit that in, also putting out 15 building cards. Sometimes one resource, because of the building cards put out, is way less useful than the others. Then the workers. Every building you build, you need a worker. If you don't roll one, you have to then spend a resource slash other things to get a worker. You can't save workers, so if you roll a bunch of them, ha, 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 ha. And I find this very, very problematic because it's just luck. This game comes down so much to luck of the dice. The area control thing, boring. Uh, getting the cards and putting them on a time track and running them off, that's interesting. And getting special abilities, that's interesting. But I don't get to really build the engine I want. I build the engine I get. And I don't want that. I don't want an engine at well. That's the resources I had. But I don't see any other option. You pay your money. You get the extra dice. You hope you get a good roll. Here's the resource you get. What card do you want to buy? Put that card out. Yay. And it's not that the game is bad. It's just that I don't want to play it again because I want to make choices in my games. And this game gives you the illusion of choices but really kind of constricts you. Meh is what I say to this, which is unfortunate. Big giant box. Could have been a kind of a big cool game, but it's not. Dice Tower Judgment. Too few decisions. <laughs>